Peru used to be called Clock City. On the right is the West Clocks Museum, which is where the company originally known as the Western Clock Company, and then eventually, West Clocks, operated for almost a century. Both Peru and La Celle are about an hour and 45 minute drive southwest of downtown Chicago. What is up YouTubers? If you're looking for a budget-friendly camera, but you still want great quality footage, I would highly suggest scrolling down to the link below to grab the GoPro Hero 9 Black. If that's still a little bit too expensive, too much more than you're wanting to spend, no problem, because GoPro also has the GoPro Hero 7 Black, which also provides great quality footage. So like I said, down below I have links for that, plus I have links for all of the other equipment that I use to make my videos on this channel. Go check them out. Both Peru and La Selle sit on top of a small bluff over the Illinois River. Both cities combined have a population of just under 20,000 residents. Both towns are located in La Selle County, which as a whole is home to 100,000 residents. In this video, I drive in mad circles around the cities that are Peru and La Selle, Illinois. Well, let's get to it, shall we? I do start the video on the far northern side of Peru. If you're unfamiliar with my videos, I usually speed up my videos in order to show more in a less amount of time. You can always keep up with the real time that it takes me to drive in the lower left corner of the screen. If you enjoy this video, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. Also, if you enjoy this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos on other places like Peru and La Selle can be found in my Illinois playlist or in my USA Small Cities playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. As we start things off, I drive by the Peru Mall, which looks like it's seen better days. It doesn't help that I'm driving by the mall at 7 a.m. Central Time, and it also exaggerates things when you factor in that I drove by during the pandemic. However, even before the pandemic started, it's been darn near impossible for smaller cities and towns with indoor shopping malls to sustain them, as online shopping has taken over the retail industry. You can see the faded text of J.C. Penney on the facade of the mall. Nowadays, the reality is that companies can't always justify operating stores that are outside of the major metropolitan areas, which forces the people in rural America to drive forever if they want to have a traditional shopping experience. The Peru Mall is still open, but the real question is, for how much longer? The mall is owned by a company called GK Real Estate, and in 2020, around the time that I visited, the mall owners proposed a redevelopment plan to convert the mall to a mixed-use development. This would tear down 60% of the mall and replace it with apartments, restaurants, and a few store chains. We see this a lot in bigger cities when land use is being redeveloped. It would be interesting to see that kind of development happen in a town the size of Peru. In order for that to happen, the city has to approve of the plan. The date of me editing this video and putting on the final touches is March 2nd, 2021, and as of that date, I couldn't find anything saying whether this plan was approved or not. Maybe some of the locals will know and can leave a comment below. This beat in my dream. Now it's time to head towards downtown Peru.
The building that you see on the left is the post office, and this is downtown Peru. On the right ahead, you can see a statue of a woman playing a violin on a city plaza. That's a statue of Maud Powell, who is a violinist. The website called new.maudpowell.org claims that it's the only statue in the United States of an American woman musician. Powell was born in Peru. Peru today is home to 9,700 residents, which is down from a 1970 peak population of 11,700. The median household income here is $51,000 per year, and 23% of adults hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $127,000, and the crime rates are well below average. Niche.com gives the public schools a B+, so that's pretty good. Peru was settled in 1830 and was organized as a borough in 1838. On March 13, 1851, the city was incorporated as a city. The date that I uploaded this video is just several days prior to the city's 170th birthday. Both Peru and neighboring La Salle grew off of the Illinois and Michigan Canal, which was built to connect Chicago to the Mississippi River. The canal ended in La Salle, however Peru still saw the economic impact of that canal being dug, as Peru is just downstream along the Illinois River. The Illinois and Michigan Canal was soon replaced by the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal in 1900. Today, much of the Illinois and Michigan Canal has been converted into a hiking and biking trail with some canoeing as well. You can also find historic buildings off of the path as it was designated as the first National Heritage Corridor by the U.S. Congress in 1984. Now I start heading towards the banks of the Illinois River. I can imagine that floods are an issue below the bluffs, as just about every river will flood. It looks like there's a few nice places to eat down here, where you can enjoy the scenery of the river, and getting bit by mosquitoes of course.
Peru used to be called Clock City. On the right is the West Clocks Museum, which is where the company originally known as the Western Clock Company, and then eventually, West Clocks, operated for almost a century. In the early 20th century, this company was spitting out over 1 million clocks per year. Now we are within the city limits of La Salle. La Salle is home to 8,900 residents, which is down from a 1930 peak population of 13,000. The median household income is just under $50,000 per year, and 18% of adults 25 and older hold a bachelor's degree or higher. The median value of owner-occupied housing units is $93,000, and the crime rates are even lower than nearby Peru. The public schools are rated as a B on niche.com, so that's pretty good. I only drive on 1st Street for a single block, but in the 1940s and 50s, the stretch of 1st Street through downtown was known as Little Reno. People from Chicago and the Quad Cities would come here to experience illegal gambling. There were up to 80 saloons in La Salle during the 1940s and 50s. However, a federal raid in 1953 at a club known as Kelly and Colleys ended that era. Gone are the glory days, however, of Peru and La Salle, even though both towns have a prosperous past and more history that I could ever get to in one video, today both towns have seen consistent population decline as jobs continue to leave. Part of it is due to the exodus of manufacturing jobs in the 80s through the early 2000s, and sure, you could blame it on that, but we've seen some communities in other parts of the Midwest regain some of those manufacturing jobs in recent years. The other part is that these two communities are in the state of Illinois, and high taxes make it an even tougher challenge to try to bring in new companies. Companies would much rather set up shop in other nearby states where they don't have to pay as much in taxes, and until Illinois can solve its own fiscal crisis, it's hard to imagine the taxes getting lowered anytime soon. Until the state can figure it out, it's going to be a really tough time for these communities to rebound. It's not a Democrat versus Republican thing, I get called both equally depending on what video it is that I'm making which is actually really funny. It's simply a tax thing however. People want to be able to make decisions that are in the best financial interest for them, and other states simply provide a better opportunity for individuals and businesses to keep more of their money.
Outside of both Peru and La Selle are several state parks. One of them is called Starved Rock State Park, which is a popular place to enjoy the outdoors east of La Selle. The bluffs of the Illinois River create some scenic spots such as Starved Rock State Park, where you can see a waterfall. Another state park called Matheson State Park is south of Starved Rock, where there is also another waterfall. In this video you learned about some, not all, but some of the history that made both Peru and La Selle prosperous in the early days of being settled in the Illinois Valley. I do end the video here. If you enjoyed this video make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe as doing all of those things helps these videos destroy the monster that is the YouTube algorithm. Also make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can be notified every time that I upload a new video of an area near you. Also, if you enjoy this video, you might enjoy checking out some of the featured playlists on this channel. Videos on other places like Peru and La Selle can be found in my Illinois playlist or in my USA Small Cities playlist. Last but not least, if you can't get enough of me on here, you can always go follow me on my other social media accounts, and those links are below. We'll see you next time. Peace!